Greetings once again, Shinobi. Dudes, this then back again with more Naruto Kanoha story. The Steam Ninja Scroll. As Mirai, Kakashi, and Guy continue their travels for their diplomatic mission, they stayed at an inn and encountered Ten Ten, who was up to some shenanigans to give Guy quite a fright, where Guy did end up having a bit of a encounter with the spiritual kind. But as they move forward, something is blocking their path. A massive mountain-sized boulder. Why is it here? And is it just happenstance? Join me as I find out, won't you? Alright, Naruto, Kanoha, Story, The Steam Ninja Scrolls, The Strongest Ally, Chapter 9. Mirai says, according to the map, there's supposed to be a village here. An older lady comes out of a nearby house to the trio, saying, have you come here for the hot spring? As the group turned to her, she says, We had a landslide last month. That giant boulder came tumbling down from the mountain and has been sitting there ever since. It was a miracle no one was killed. Mariah questions, Isn't the land of steam doing anything about it? The woman says, We're a small village deep in the mountains. Just getting here takes considerable effort. And it'll take more than a few officiants to do anything about a boulder this massive. Uh, the plight of small communities, unfortunately. Often overlooked for the bigger populaces. Guy says with frustration, Ugh, it's too bad. If I were just ten years younger, I could have sh easily shattered this rock. He's not lying. <laughs> Anyone who's watched Naruto knows that that is the truth. Kakashi pats the boulder, saying, There's nothing to be done about this. It's no mere boulder. I wouldn't be surprised if it had metal in it. Hmm. Yeah, so it's like a giant chunk of ore. I don't know, how did it come rolling down? Where did it come rolling out of? Feels like a jutsu. Like it's one of Madara's meteors. The old woman points to her lodge saying, well, you've come all this way, you can rest in here. And then we pick up with Kakashi guy and I guess a few other people staying at, is this an inn? And they're drinking. Huh. They give a cheers, come by. As the men they're drinking with say, you guys know how to handle your drinks. Here, have some more. As they pour a guy another drink, where a guy is obviously sloshed and he's laughing up a storm. Kakashi says, how's the reconstruction going? The man says, terribly, it's impossible. I don't know whether to call that thing a boulder or a mountain, but it makes no difference. We were told to handle it, but we've done all we can do. The leadership doesn't understand the situation here. They're putting this all on us cause, just because we're in the middle of nowhere. It's too far from us to come. What a load of crap. Send us more people already, morons. And yeah, if this is blocking a major route of commute, it could be a bit of a problem in the long run. But a man says, it doesn't help that someone is abducting young women from a nearby village. I don't know if it's bandits or what. Huh. He points to Mariah saying, the girls were about your age, actually. I'm not sure how many it's been. Ugh. Way to scare the girl. But, you know, better to inform a young woman rather than have her not be aware of the situation that could be presented to her. But lives are at stake, so it's only natural that takes priority, which means no aid for us. They laugh, saying, maybe we ought to ask the Kanoha Shinobi for help. You really think they'd cross the border and come all this way out here for us? Never. Not a chance. But Mariah thinks solemnly, except we are here. Oh, okay, so they're also Shinobi. They've got the steam headbands. I didn't notice that before. One of the men says, yeah, and even if they did, they probably sent some low-ranking nobodies with no authority as a mere formality. You know, guys like us. Mariah laughs and thinks the former Hokage is sitting next to you. I mean, that's all incidental, Mirai. They're not wrong. The men go on saying, besides, even a really terrific Earthstar Shinobi would have a hard time with that thing on their own. That boulder is just too gigantic. Mirai thinks to herself, the land of steam is a peaceful nation. They completely loathe fighting, and I hear their Shinobi share the same temperament. I'm not sure they'll ever do anything about this. Hmm. I actually don't remember. How many filler did we have in the Land of Steam? Because I know it was hardly ever a main plot point. Kakashi whispers to Mirai, You must be bored, huh? Not thinking, she says, Yep. But then realizing what she said, she says, Ah, I mean... Kakashi says, No, it's fine. You're thinking about the boulder, aren't you? I can keep an eye on Guy. I don't mind if you step out. Mirai gets up saying, Well, in that case, I'll take a quick look. And her wanting to help out in the long run. She walks up to the massive boulder saying, Whatever my opinion on the of the 
you Gakurei Shinobi is. It's not like I can crush this boulder ease either. We then pick up with, I guess, target practice. Oh, Shikadai. And uh, Shikadai misses the mark a little bit. Mariah yells, Shikadai, how many times have am I going to have to tell you? Take this seriously. Shikadai dismisses her saying, huh, whatever. What are you, my mom? Oh god, he's actually worse than you. <laughs> Shikamaru. He's got a combination of Shikamaru and Tamari's attitudes. That is actually terrible. Mirai yells, what was that? Shikadai simply says, yeah, yeah. As Mirai's anger grows more and more, she's starting to resemble Ino or Sakura more than anyone else. She says, why you little? <laughs> Start strangling him like Bart Simpson. Enter Shikamaru, saying, Mirai. Mirai turns to him, saying, oh, Master Shikamaru. Shikamaru says, how's the training going? <laughs> Shikadai calls out Mirai saying, ew, the minute my dad shows up, you start acting all nice? Mirai says, shut up and throw your shuriken. Realizing that she's, uh, got into angry mode again and Shikabar's right there, she pauses dead and then says, ugh, Oh, ah, uh, yes, the training's going fine. Shikamaru says, I see. Thanks again for all your help. Shikadai then hurts a perfect bullseye, effortlessly, and Shikamaru tells Mirai, he comes through when it counts, but every other word he says is whatever. Teenagers. Mirai says, he reminds me of someone. Shikamaru, <laughs> kind of realizing that, says, uh, yeah, I wonder who. <laughs> you gotta love it when you see a reflection of yourself in your own kids. Mirai says, he just needs to apply himself more to his training. Shikamaru confirms, saying, right, he still needs more training. In present day, we pick up with Mirai saying, I still need more training. Who am I to criticize Shikadai? Kakashi then walks up from behind, saying, even if we could shatter that boulder, Moving the rubble would be a huge undertaking. That's true. Without more people, it's nearly impossible. Mirai calls out to him. Kakashi then adds, Anyway, the amount of power it would take to crush this rock would surely cause damage to everything else around it. Mirai then questions, So nothing can be done about it? This village will be like this forever? Kakashi then says, No. There's a way. We have a shinobi who happens to be near the border on another mission. I managed to send a message to him just now. Huh. Okay, so another shinobi showing up. Again, I actually like this manga just because it's just like, it's a who's who of characters who just have not been featured in Boruto. Don't tell me it's Rock Lee or something. He's gonna like burrow kick through it so that there's a way to pass through without needing to go over the massive boulder. Mirai says excitedly, so we can do something? Kagashi says he should arrive tomorrow morning. Wow, that's fast. He gives Mirai a smile under his mask. I guess we pick up in the morning where Guy is completely hungover. It's like, oh, what a hangover. While the rest of the men are still kind of sloshed playing games saying, Came on, Koi Koi. I actually forget what that game is, Koi Koi. We then have Mirai standing outside thinking, I wonder who Lord Six called. Surely not Lord Seven. He's much too busy, of course. It has to be someone nearly as strong as Lord Seventh, and he would happen to be nearby on a mission, which means, oh, a figure starts approaching. Oh shit, Sasuke? Mariah thinks to herself, no way, is it the legendary? <laughs> Choji, I feel bad. I feel bad because Choji's cool though. He's strong. Come on. Choji walks up saying, "Hey, Mirai." Hey, Mirai, surprised saying, "Choji." And as Guy is further passed out inside, as a bit of a pun, the men playing inside say, "Yeah, in a Shikacho." Oh yeah, I forgot. That's like a hand in some kind of card game. Outside, Choji sits down on a nearby rock saying, Phew, I need a break. Pulls out his signature bag of chips saying, It's quite hot today, isn't it? This shade's a real lifesaver. Want some potato chips, Mirai? Mirai says, Sure, thanks. So she grabs one and starts eating. She thinks about Choji as well as his daughter, Chocho, thinking, Choji and Master Shikamaru are close friends. So I know him from way back. I always thought of him more as a doting father than as someone especially, especially powerful. Yeah, he does really care about his daughter a lot, even though she's a bit of a punk. But she's one of those daughters who, as she grows up and probably has kids of her own, she'll really understand her dad. Either that or it's more like Chi-Chi and the Ox King from Dragon Ball. Mirai then points out to Choji about the cho boulder, Mr. Choji. Choji says, yeah, the hot spring is underneath it, right? We better hurry and uncover it. I'll give her a push and see. Mariah says, a push? You're gonna push it? 
Can you really do that? Chochi downs the rest of his chips, saying, I don't know unless I try. I'll give it my best. Kakashi walks up, saying, Thanks for coming. I know this was out of your way. Must have been a long trip. Eat up. He hands over, what are those, potatoes? A basket full. About five, but big old steamed potatoes, I think. Chochi says, as he grabs them, are those what I think they are? Oh, delicious. This must be the underground roasted potatoes. I wouldn't be exaggerating if I said I came here just so that I could experience them for myself. And he starts downing them, saying, Oh, so good. They're just too good. Mariah looks on in shock as he just wolfs them down, like Kirby just opening him with his mouth and inhaling. Kakashi tells her, It's alright. No need to rush. Just what? And as Choji finishes, he says, Ah, now then. Mariah thinks for so finally. And then Choji opens a bag of chips saying, on to the next one. Mariah thinks we're so frustrated. I thought that was just a snack. Is he ever gonna be done? And then Choji finishes that bag of chips. Mariah thinks we're so finally. But Choji's belly continues to growl saying, sorry, that's still not enough calories. Much to Mariah and Kakashi's shock and disappointment. And is he gonna have to whip out a food pill or something? Then again, he said push it. Is he really gonna be able to just push it? I mean, is he gonna, like, grow to his big old size? That's kind of like the signature of him and his dad at this point. Choji says, I need a little bit more. There's one more bag of potato chips. Mariah says, but that was the last one. Choji says, yeah, I'm fresh out. What a pickle. It's gotta be potato chips. The oil is crucial. Mariah thinks to herself, oh, I get it. Mr. Choji must use a special jutsu that requires a lot of calories. But good luck finding anyone selling potato chips around here. What can we do? Oh. Enter the old lady who has a bag of potatoes on her back saying, If it's potatoes that cheap, if it's potatoes you need, I've got plenty. Mirai says, We can have all of them? Are you sure? The old lady sets down the bag saying, There's more where these come from. Go on, take them. Mirai examines them thinking, That's it. And she picks up the basket of potatoes telling Choji, Wait right there, Choji. And I guess she rushes into the kitchen ready to cook saying, I'll do it. I'll make potato chips. <laughs> What a weird, dramatic situation. Again, ba very much playing into the filler-like nature of this storyline. I can really see why this ended up becoming a, one of the first things included in Boruto, since people have said it before, but a lot of Boruto just feels like a lot of filler. But from what I heard in Japan, the filler in Naruto was actually a lot more popular than most people think. It does always make me laugh that like one third of the Naruto series was the Kanoha 11 as kids just going on adventures and having fun and just nonsense to a certain degree. And then you get to Boruto and it ends up being much of the same in a lot of people complain about that but i'm just like look it's a time-honored tradition in naruto that you get a whole lot of filler just to fill in the school day gap although again i've said it before i am happy that we're at least getting moments where some of the side characters get to shine who again don't ever really get to show up in boruto like that at least not in the manga version of boruto so from that perspective that's why a lot of this gets a pass from me but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Are you happy to see Choji in action and have a lot of more of this lighthearted fare? Or do you <laughs> do you wish they just kind of get to like the action of things? And we had that whole setup for the cult of Jashin going on and I'm just like, okay, things are about to ramp up. And then we get into more shenanigans. But I still enjoy Mariah as a character. Essentially just learning to appreciate the little things. Almost kind of calling out as just like, listen Mariah, you're not a main character. You gotta get used to the side character life. But again, I want to hear from you, so comment. Also remember to subscribe. Subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video. And until then, I've been this this then, and I hope to see you later. Take care. Bye bye.